Channel 5's recent gangland documentaries were a perfect insight into how, when you raise a generation of boys without their fathers, you end up with higher levels of mayhem, underachievement and hopelessness. This is a talking dude. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to the YouTube channel and also check out on Twitter, it's at a talking dude. So the Channel 5 has done these two documentaries recently called Gangland, and they focus on gangs in London, but really it's, it's about black gangs in London. Everyone that they talked to was, was black. And uh, rather than focusing on the issue that I want to focus on in this video, which is about the, the fatherlessness issue, most of the people I've seen who've made YouTube videos in response, they've talked about Oh, why is there? Why are they only talking about black people? Oh, why are there no positive role models? Oh, why? Uh, you know these these people in these documentaries—they're just actors, and and so on, and so forth, and so on. And for me, this is just typical of the deflection that takes place within black people on a public level, at least when it comes to talking about these issues to do with crime, to do with gun crime to do with violence to do to deal to do with delinquency to do with under you know under under achievement in education and so on and so forth it's always somebody else's fault the problem is we've been trained black people have been trained at least black people who talk publicly have been trained by social democrats by the labor party by our involvement in the trade unions and all this kind of stuff we've been trained to always look at the system and never to look at ourselves to say, what can we be doing? What is there that we are doing as black people that might be contributing to some of these problems? You cannot, in any seriousness, try and claim that, you know, that what's taking place, what, what we saw in this gangland documentaries isn't taking place on the streets and doesn't unfortunately represent a disproportionately high number of black young people's lives and black boys' lives in particular. Now, the fact is that, of course, not all black boys are involved in crime. The vast majority of black boys, just like the vast majority of, every, of boys of every other ethnicity, are not involved in crime. It's only a tiny minority of people. However, unfortunately, that tiny minority of people cause mayhem and misery for everybody else. So, at the end of the second uh, Gangland documentary, I was almost in tears. When you're looking at how one of the guys, you know, a group of about seven or eight of them, and three of them were stabbed over the space of around about a year and a bit. You know, it's, it's, it's heartbreaking. It really is heartbreaking to see the parents who are losing their children, the friends who are losing their friends, and then the, the fear as well. That's what really came across in that second documentary. The, the, the people, these kids are fearful. They're terrified. Because in those areas where they live, in these parts of New Cross and Peckham and Rare, 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 all these other places, they feel like they can't go out on the streets without carrying a knife. And it's it's devastating. And that's one of the, the fear, really. And, and the, you know, the wanting to get some kind of protection is one of the reasons, key reasons why a lot of them are saying they join the gangs. They join the gangs a lot of the time to get that sense of protection, that sense of, uh, you know, having people having their back. And that's it's a sad state of affairs. But, you know... The issue for me, it comes down to fatherlessness. And, and I say that because it's, first of all, let's look at the rates of criminality in the black community. We see, just to give you a quick insight, this is a Guardian article from 2015. It says, sharp rise in the proportion of young black and ethnic minority prisoners. Campaigners cite stop and search as a key reason why 40% of those behind bars hail from BM, BME background. A greater disproportion than in the US. And what we find out is that later on, we see here in the article that the share of black prisoners now accounts for one in five of young people locked up. So basically, 20% of those of those young offenders who are in behind bars are black people. So half of the BME population in prison are black people. Likewise, when we look at the overall prison population, these are government statistics from 20, 2005 up to 2015. We see it's remained around about 25% of the prison population has been black and minority ethnic, of which half has been black. The black, this dark blue line is the black uh, population. So black people have consistently been making up a massive over proportion of those people who are in prison. 
you know, again, as I've talked about in previous videos, you can say it's because of racism, you can say it's because of white supremacy, you can say it's racist cops, you can say it's stop and search, this, that and the other. There's an element of truth in all of those things. However, I just think that we need to stop running away from the elephant in the room, which is that there is an a higher level of criminality in us in our in our streets when it comes to young black boys and here's the thing this is a this is a government this is a speech from ian duncan smith in 2007 the speech is entitled being tough on the causes of crime tackling family breakdown to prevent youth crime and it's uh, from 2007 rather and on page six of this speech he has uh, some stark stark facts to lay out he says we all know children who were raised well by lone parents, but the evidence of a series of UK longitudinal studies shows strong correlations between broken homes and delinquency. 70% of young offenders come from lone parent families. Compared to children in two parent families, children in one parent families are significantly more likely to smoke weekly, drink weekly, and take drugs weekly. These statistics are not surprising when all the other disadvantages which cluster around growing up without two parents are taken into account. And there's other studies as well. I mean, those that was all based on, uh, on, on references here, including the 70% the of young offenders coming from lone parent families was from the Youth Justice Board in 2002. God knows what the statistic would be now. I can't find any more recent figures than that. But for me, this would help to explain the disparity of black young offenders and black prisoners more generally. Because when we look at these, this Equality and Human Rights Commission report from 2000 and I think it's 2010, but it looks at statistics between 2004 and 2008, and it looks at what proportion of these children of these ethnicities were brought up in lone parent families. So the, f the first column here is lone parent family. So what percent of white of white British boy uh, children under under sixteen were raised by lone parent families twenty three percent. We go down to Asian, so we got Indian ten percent, fifteen percent for Pakistani, fourteen percent for Bangladeshi, and then you get to the black children under age sixteen. Black African children forty four percent of them were raised by single being raised by lone parents. Other black children under sixteen forty seven percent of them being raised by single parents. Black Caribbean children, 65% of them are being raised by single parents. Compare those statistics with the statistics of everybody else. They range from kind of twice the rate of white British under 16 year olds to four, five and six times the rate of Indian, Pakistani and Bangladeshi, Bengali children. It's no surprise to me then when you look at things like education, which I won't talk about in this video, all of those groups are outperforming black children even though the poverty rates amongst particularly Bengalis, Bangladeshi children, people, is higher than it is amongst black people, and yet they outperform our children in schools. They get higher grades than our children do in schools. Why is this? Well, I think it's got to be related to the, 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 the fatherlessness, the, father, the, the, the void, the, 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 the absence of fathers in the black community. Now, the, I bring this up with regard to gangland because when you look at gangland and you look when you study when you watched it what you found is that over and over and over again these young people in this in the documentary were saying they don't have guidance they were they got involved in gangs because they were following the 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 sort of leadings of the elders you know they were they they were being told to get into the gangs to be you know be part of the crew the peer pressure they were talking about likewise you find that. A lot of the time they were talking about how they were conflicted. On the one hand, they were hearing their mothers saying, well, you know, don't get involved in these things. But all around them on the streets, the, the you know, the message was get involved in all of this badness. You, don't, you didn't see any fathers really being in, interviewed. All of the time you were seeing mothers being interviewed, the mothers of these boys who were involved in crime or the boys who were, who were in the middle of the mayhem that was going on. Like there's those boys in the New Cross who... There wasn't a gang per se, but there were, you know, the, the, the young boy was talking about how he was carrying a knife. He wasn't in a gang, but he was carrying a knife because so much stabbing was taking place. A friend of his was stabbed just before they started filming the documentary. His mum was saying how he knows. His mum was, I give credit to her, she was keeping it real. She was saying, look, he's no saint. I understand that he's trying to take knives out to, to, for, to protect himself. I'm trying to stop him, but 
you know, sometimes he gets out and I, and I can't stop him. And, you know, it's no wonder that boys like him are, are carrying knives because during the, you know, during the filming of that documentary, he himself got put away for three months because he kept getting caught with, a, with an offensive weapon. Shortly after he got put away, another, a second of his friends got, got, got killed, a rapper by the name of uh, M-Dot. And then after the actual filming had finished, after the documentary, you know, had been, was, was about to be aired, a third one of that same group of friends got stabbed to death. So in this kind of climate, it's no surprise that so many of them are, 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 you know, are, are looking to carry knives and so forth. But the key is that when you don't have a father figure around who's there to support you and to encourage you and to protect you from the influences outside on the streets, then you're more likely to be getting involved in the, in the peer pressure. You're more likely to succumb to the peer pressure to carry these knives and, and these things. It doesn't excuse it, but it helps, to it helps us to understand and explain it. This guy on the screen, I believe this was Jordy, the guy who, you know, who had the, the empire in uh, drug drug network in Hampshire or something, and he had cousins in France and this, that, and the other. He said that the, the person who had the most positive influence on him was the mentor. He had some mentoring sessions with a guy who was a former drug uh, a gang member himself. And he said that he's, he was the one who had the strongest influence, the most positive influence on him. Again, reading between the lines, where was his dad? Clearly, it's obvious his dad wasn't there, and so he didn't have that kind of positive, uh, you know, positive role model. When people go on about positive role models, you don't need... Po Humans have evolved very well over time, or if you're a religious person, God created us very well from the beginning, from a Christian perspective. Man, woman, and child. That is the family structure. That's the, that's the role model. You have the female role model, you have the male role model. Both the, man, the father and the mother are supposed to be raising and nurturing the children, in the way to go so that they don't end up going astray. That's what, you know, family is the role model structure. And yet these idiot left, these idiot kind of social Democrats, they want to say, oh, we need to give more benefits to single mothers so that they not so many of them are in poverty. Stop trying to make things so complicated. And, and let's talk about the elephant in the room. If you have breakdown of family structure, you have increased levels of criminality. Now, I want to just read from you, read to you from this Home Affairs Committee report that was done in 2007, and it's about black crime, young black crime, how to deal with young black crime. And one of the sections is very revealing. I'm going to read at length from it, sections of it. It says, well, let's have a look. It says, 129 here, black children overall are more likely to grow up in single parent households, as I've said in, my, in the video already. So let's skip that. And it, it makes a point that... Uh, you know, just because there's a father, let me read it. It says, the fact that a father does not live in the same household with his children is not in itself an indication of insufficient parental support, as many of our witnesses made clear. Neil Solo of Bonardo's, which run a program of parenting support for, and advice, specifically for African and Caribbean fathers, cautioned against trying to impose a Eurocentric family model on other ethnic groups. Now, here's the thing. I understand what he's getting at. He's, he's trying to get at the, the extended family thing, but Let's be real. Let's be frank. You're looking at a bunch of children, boys in particular, who are in council flats or in, you know, whatever, just with their mothers. There is not a wide... It, whether you've got cousins or aunties or uncles, this, that, and the other is besides the point. If you do not have a father in your home, it's, the likelihood is that the father himself is not going to be having much of an imp input. I'll scroll down. I'll scroll down here. It says here... Many witnesses said, said that an absent and disengaged father had a negative impact on young people's development. I think that's key. You know, even if the parents are separated, if the father is engaged, I've got friends who are in that exact same situation and their boys have turned out very well, even though they're not with the, you know, they're not with the, the mother. That's because they're engaging. They're, they're getting involved. They're getting involved in their schooling. They're looking after them and so forth and so on. So just because you're a single parent family doesn't necessarily mean that you're not, you're not having father input. But unfortunately, the majority of, in the majority of cases, that is the situation. In their joint admission, Bernardo's and the Baby Father Alliance said boys and young men who lack father involvement can develop father hunger. I love that term, father hunger, a trauma which leaves them vulnerable to peer pressure and external influences. Reverend Nims Abunge argued that, quote, an un, an an acknowledged breakdown in the social fabric of many black families is most typically exemplified by the lack of a strong father figure in the home. 
unquote. Dr. Gishard Pine pointed out that men, sorry, boys appear to be more affected by family breakdown than girls. Young people and practitioners we spoke to make, made a link between the absence of positive male role model in the home and involvement in gangs or other youth affiliations which commit crime. And I'll skip down to this bit. It says, responsibility for father absence cannot be blame, placed with a male par partner alone. Camila Batman, oh gosh, Batman Gilij, Batman Gilij, told the committee of the rejection and cruelty of females who rejected the adolescent male partner refer, preferring to cope alone. Neil Solo of Bernardo's told us that the majority of African and Caribbean fathers want contact but can be frustrated by laws put which place women as the primary caregiver. I'm going to stop there. I really uh, encourage you to read that whole report. It's fascinating stuff. But the key thing is here, look, man, when we see things like gangland, and not even just gangland, when we see statistics like this, which show that 20% of young offenders in, in prison are black, and when we see that, you know, 15%, 15%, 10 to 15% of prisoners are black, even though black people make up only 2 to 3% of the population, when we see things like gangland, don't, let's not pretend that gangland is lying to us it might be skewing it of course that's what tv does we shouldn't be expecting tv to be our you know our friends and it's not public service they're there to sensationalize and whatnot but it is showing us these are real people that they're talking about and it's the tip of a, of, of the iceberg as far as the breakdown of the black family in the uk is concerned these are fatherless boys in crisis fatherless black boys in crisis and with until again to sign off until the black community, black people in the UK face up to this problem and start to deal with the underlying causes of the lack of father figures in, 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 you know, in the lives of children. This is going to continue to happen, particularly, especially as, you know, we, wanna, we need to deal with mate selection. That's the, the bottom of it, isn't it? Mate selection. People are, why are people having children with other people who they, you know, they don't know very well. They don't know well enough. Anyway, I'll talk about that in a future video, but that's just my thoughts on this on this gangland documentary. Stop blaming everybody else and let's start looking at the issues of fatherlessness within the black community. If I'm talking rubbish, let me know in the comments and explain to me how I'm talking rubbish. Feel free to call me a coon if you're black, uh, you know, and you're one of those uh, pro-black or woke people, or conscious people. Call me a coon, that's fine. I know that I'm hitting a nerve, which is always good. The journey toward truth always starts with people, with you being unsettled and you having to confront some of your cherished beliefs that you've you know emotionally attached so any coon comments will be welcome take care i'll see you next time don't forget to subscribe to a talking dude all right see you later